We've alluded a couple times to the electrical coming up, and actually not even alluded, we've said electrical is coming up. And judging by the influx of comments about how we should set it up and whether we should use conduit and how we're going to do things, I suppose it is about time that we lay down kind of our rough plan so you all understand general direction that we're driving in with the electrical. So when Carolyn was here, she was kind enough to draw up the interior layout as we kind of had it planned and built. So things have changed a little bit, but it's very close to what we have. Uh, and my friend Jeff blew it up and made some copies for us. Thank you, Jeff. So we've been working on laying out the electrical plan, and I printed out a whole bunch of little labels. So reading lights, overhead lights, bilge pumps, all the different electrical needs for the boat and went through and placed them all throughout the boat so we can get an idea of what the wiring network needs to look like and where we want to put the main power supply and how we want to connect all of that. Arabella is a pretty simple boat when it comes to electrical, but we have a few kind of funky needs. Uh, one of them, which is not really a need but a want, is that Arabella is a liveaboard cruiser and I plan to stay on her for a long time. So I want to make sure that it's very comfortable living, that if you want a light, there's a light. If you want a plug, there's a plug. Not necessarily that they're all going to be used at the same time, but it would be really nice to, for example, have two people sitting on the SETI berth and both of them having reading lights, both of them having outlet plugs. And we do make a YouTube channel, which takes a lot of time sitting in front of a computer and transferring data and charging things. So making sure that we're set up to do that while we're out voyaging is really important. The second thing that's a little funky about our plans in Arabella is the plan to go onto land and go do extended adventures. So Arabella is that adventure vehicle. And when we get to somewhere, there's a very good chance that we're gonna have someone come on the boat as crew and we're gonna get the boat to some anchorage or mooring and say, great, take care of Arabella. We're gonna be back in two months and we're gonna head into the back country and go climb and ski and explore, which means that we need to have power for us that we can take away from the boat and go into the backcountry. So having some portable solar panels and a portable battery pack is going to be really important so that when we're away from the boat, we can still film, we can still transfer data, we can still do all that stuff, which takes a good bit of energy. So as we're thinking about the house and how we want to set up the battery needs, we're also thinking of how we can take that into the back country and have it kind of pull double duty in some ways. Uh, and thankfully tech is changing and making that a lot more possible than it was even just a few years ago. Speaking of new technology, we've got some right here. Uh, so Bluetti sent us this battery pack and some solar panels to put through the paces because they'd like to see us install it and use it on Arabella. Uh, and this is something that we've been kind of thinking about and considering anyway, so it works out really well. Uh, this is Bluetti's AC200 Max, so it is a 2048 watt hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. And there's a couple nice perks with the lithium iron phosphate over some of the other lithium batteries. The fire hazard is reduced, which is good. Some of the very early lithium batteries, that was a problem. Um, but that's subsequently become much less of an issue and a concern. It operates at really low temperatures. For someone who wants to cruise to some pretty high latitudes, that is ACEs. Uh, and one of the really, really big advantages of the lithium iron phosphate is that it can charge and discharge really quickly. So if you, in traditional batteries, they can only accept so much power. So even if you hook them up to a huge power supply, you can't force that power into the battery in a short period of time. They have a charging rate and you can't exceed it. Uh, where with the newer batteries like these, they can accept a huge charging input. So you can hook this up to 900 watts of solar and you can put 500 watts of AC and you can charge all 2048 watts in two hours, which is mind boggling. Like that, that tech didn't exist just a handful of years ago. And everything that you would normally build into the system in a boat is already built into this. So it's got your charging ports built right in. So on one side, you've got all of your AC outlets, so these are your four standard 110 plugs. And then if you're in the RV crowd, you probably recognize this. So that is a 110 30 amp RV plug. Uh, so you can plug, I assume, your RV right into that. I don't have much experience in the RV world. 
Um, but more enticing to us are all of these 12 volt plugs and the boat will run on 12 volt. So we've got a, a 10 amp cigarette plug here. We've got a 30 amp plug, which we could conceivably take the 30 amp plug and divvy that out because that's quite a bit of power. Uh, and then we've got two more 10 amp plugs and we've got all of your various USB plugs. So this is pretty handy that all of that is built right into the unit, uh, as well as a pair of wireless charging ports on top, which could be handy. Uh, there's a lot that charges wireless these days. And when you turn it on, you've got your readout screen. So it'll tell you how much battery you have, uh, what your inputs are, how much is coming in. You can turn your, your DC on or off. Uh, you can turn your AC on or off. We can also add extendable battery packs to this. So trying to figure out how much power you need for the boat is really difficult. Everyone has a different answer. Some will tell you just a couple golf cart batteries and you're good to go. Others will tell you you need 500 amp hours a day or you're not gonna live. And that really depends on, on what you're running. So for us, the boat's pretty simple, but we do have all of the cameras and the computers and all of that we need to run for the channel, which does draw a pretty big draw. So 2,048 watt hours is pretty like esoteric number unless you got something to tag that to. So if you have a 10 watt uh, LED bulb, which is similar to a 100 watt incandescent in terms of how much light output it puts in, it'll run that 10 watt bulb for about 100 hours. And if you hook this machine up to your standard size refrigerator, you're gonna get roughly 30 hours, which is really significant, especially for the refrigerator, considering you're running the power through an inverter to the refrigerator. So by running through the inverter, you're actually losing power in that conversion. Uh, so we'll get more out of this running the DC uh, for the boat than we would running the AC off of it. So it's pretty neat to have the, the different battery packs. So if we were to say put this on the boat and figure out how to hook it up as our main house battery uh, and decide, ooh, we don't have quite enough power, we can buy or get another battery pack, just plug it in and extends that, uh, which is really, really handy. And we've talked about taking the power off the boat and into the backcountry. And this unit's obviously, obviously a little big to do that with, um, but Bluetti does make much smaller packages um, that would be much more portable and that we could take into the back country uh, and we could have those on the boat in conjunction with this. And it's essentially the same system. You've got an inverter and a few of your AC plugs. You've got a, a few DC plugs uh, and you can plug the solar panel into it. And the AC plugs are pure sine wave, which is great because if you're running sensitive electronics, that's really important. If it's not a pure sine wave, some of the uh, more persnickety things, they won't function. I don't know, what do you say? Should we put some loads on this thing and see how it behaves? Uh, we got some light fixtures to talk about. We've been picking up a few things and trying to get our brains wrapped around what we want to use on the interior of the boat. And we still got the solar panels to play with. Um, but let's put some loads first. So let's see. Our power is on. Our AC is on. Pick an outlet here. And right now we're drawing zero watts on the AC. And then lights have changed a lot. So we looked earlier at some of the big old fixtures from Victoria. And these are, in a lot of ways, they're modern replacements. So this is an LED wafer light. And um, we don't have a plug, but we do have some wires. Don't do this at home. So I think these would probably go pretty well mounted under the deck, you know, over the galley area and the wood stove and, and that kind of thing. So we got these to play with and you can't control them. They're either on or off. I'm, I assume we could probably put a dimmer switch in there um, and they can't change colors. And changing colors is something that is really handy on the boat 
uh, for your night vision. So I'm sure many of you are aware, but red lights are much more gentle on your eyes. Uh, so if you are up above in the dark and you come down below and you turn on a white light, it ruins your night vision and you have a hard time seeing when you go back. So having lights in the boat that are dimmable and that are red are really handy. And some of the modern LEDs are making both of those possible at once. So here we have some LED strip lighting and a couple of the uh, little uh, gym jams for it. So the LED strip light, which is literally like it says, it comes in a strip, it's got an adhesive backing on it, and you can cut these at predetermined locations, uh, and you can make these into one really long strip light, you can make them into a bunch of different ones. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with them, they're pretty versatile. And these ones are colored, which is why we have all of these wires running in, and we have a color controller here. So if we, let's see these are all off. We gotta pick up some uh, 12 volt plugs. <laughs> We're not just sticking wires in here. And you can see, so there's a flat channel here and a diffuser. This is a corner channel and a different color diffuser. Uh, so we got to play around and these are all, you just cut them to length. Um, so if we want that much LED strip light, we can just cut the channel, we can cut the cover. They've got little mounting clips. It's all pretty easy. And we can add, let's say some green. And we can add some purple. So there's our white light. And if we turn all these down together, we can get a dim white light. And get a blue light. And we can have somebody at the charge controller doing the disco party. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But really what I'm interested in these for is, is the red and the dimmable. So being able to put on bright red lights down below or or very dim red lights or be able to put on some very dim white lights uh, will be handy and those would be interspersed with you know, some puck lights and some of the overheads from Victoria so it's not like this would be the the only light source in the boat um, but it would give us quite a variety of capabilities So right now, between my phone charging and the entire strip of LED lights, we're pulling uh, 10 to 18 watts, depending on how bright you have those. So here, turn them all on, but just ever so slightly. So if we turn them all, all on, but on low, we're pulling about eight. And if we turn them all up, Whoa, it's so blue. when you get brighter, and now we're pulling 35, 32. Really up. Well, when the boat's done and Aaron's visiting, we know where he's going to be. And it's going to be at the light controller. I'm going to be DJ. He's going to be my light guy. <laughs> and then we can DC off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so if you get the AC 200 Max kit, you get three of these solar panels that come with it. So each one of these is 200 watt. In here, these are those uh, MC4 connectors. So pretty standard. You got your little O-ring there to, to help with waterproofness. Um, and they just plug in together. So that's pretty easy. You get a little bag for them. And then these are kickstands, which are kind of neat. So I pop them open, you can see 45 degrees is this one and plus or minus five degrees. And these are monocrystalline panels. So they're not flexible, they're rigid, which they're a little heavier and a little bulkier, but they perform better in low light. Uh, so they'll perform better at the high latitudes, which as we previously mentioned, 
will be really nice uh, with the places we want to go and teams well with the battery. And these are not waterproof, so we can't go dunk these into the ocean, uh, but they are, can certainly get rained on and be splashed and that'll be totally fine. So they're you know, middle of the road industry standard for what you're gonna get with solar panels. Uh, you can see opened up, it's pretty big, but folded down, it's just under two foot by two foot. It's 23 by 24 inches. So as you can see, they're pretty compact. Um, so Arabella doesn't have a great space for a huge solar array. And this is a pretty good option that we'll be able to put these on the deck uh, when we're at Anchorage or Mooring and pretty quickly, easily unplug them, fold them up and tuck them away down below when we're traveling, which could be could be really nice. And these, the three of them come with the AC 200 Max, but we can put, if I remember correctly, five of these and charge the AC 200 Max off of them. I don't know if we can fit five of these huge panels on the boat, um, but it would certainly give us plenty of plenty of solar power. So I don't know about you guys, but I would like to get these plugged into the Blue Eddy and see in this low light and behind the trees how much power we're actually getting out of these 600 watts of panels. Because 600 watts is in prime conditions, which you're very rarely gonna see, especially on a boat where you have rigging and sails and spars and they shade the solar panels. And that's where having the monocrystalline is really important. So that if part of this is shaded, the other part will work more effectively, not amazingly, but more effectively than the, uh, the flexible kind. 157, 150. <laughs> Less when Aaron's blocking it. And that sun is very, very low in the sky. And these panels are not getting amazing sun. I'm fairly impressed. Blueberry has this app and um, just gonna try it out real quick. Have a look at, it just sort of has a welcome there. If I connect to the device through YouTube, uh, Bluetooth, One. I guess it can connect to multiple devices. You can probably flip through if you had more than one charging unit. Oh, neat. Okay, so it does it does recognize that it's got the panels hooked up. Nothing's coming in right now because they're fully shaded. Um, when I was inside the house, it wasn't picking it up um, from in there, but. That's okay because apparently it's got kind of a five meter range around it, which is enough within a boat, I think, to be able to, if you wanted to have a quick look at what's coming in on my panels right now, should I move them? That's a really nice one too, like through the day, should I move my panels around? On a boat, you sometimes experience that, but I can turn on or turn off the AC power from here and I can see what's, what all is plugged in and just be able to see the system. And I think that's about it. This just tells me which device I'm connected to, and um, I think that possibly this is just to make sure that I'm not drawing all the time on my phone. It's not gonna draw my battery down to have it be checking in and connecting with the Blue Eddy. So that's kind of nice too, if I don't need to constantly be looking at it. Oop, 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 oop. <laughs> but that's pretty neat to be able to have this sort of this level of control from over here, pretty much exactly what we would be able to do on that touch screen. We've been using the Bluetti here a little bit and drained the battery down. So we got down to 19% and we had the solar panels. So we got to mount it outside on the building. Uh, and right now those are going in at 150 watts or so. And we've got the Blue Eddy plugged in as well. So that's bringing in another about 300 or so watts. So if you have it charging at its full 500 watt AC capabilities, plus it's full 900 watt of solar going in. Hit that right, 900 and 500, yep. Um, this can charge in about two hours, which is pretty crazy. 
uh, older style batteries, even the uh, older lithiums, they don't charge that fast. You can't put 2000 watt hours into the battery uh, in a matter of a couple hours. So that's really one of the amazing things with the charging rates on these. So between the solar and being plugged in, we just went from 19% to 98% in just a few hours, uh, which is really, really impressive. We had to buy a longer cable so that we could run it uh, from the solar panels on the side of the building all the way to here in the boat. Because this is where I'd like to leave it. Uh, it'd be really handy to have it down here with the 110 outlets and especially with the tow volt and the wireless charging on the top. I can just throw my phone on there, which we use for filming, uh, to charge and we can plug in the microphones and everything. And so that'll be pretty handy. And we can continue to, to put it through its paces uh, so we set the solar panels up on the side of the boathouse and when you set up solar panels you really don't want to set them up and have them not have a place to put power. Uh, so as soon as the sun touches them they start creating energy and if they don't have a place for that to go they'll eventually cook themselves. So we needed to make sure that we had the battery here close enough to the solar panels that solar panels could feed into it. But now that we've got these longer extension cables that I just ran uh, we can leave the battery here in the boathouse. Well, I think that wraps up our uh, talk about the Blue Eddy for now. I think there's potential here for having a larger version like this set up as the house bank. Obviously, this is designed for, for plug, plug and play uh, and not so much designed as the main battery bank for like an off the grid system like the sailboat is. Uh, but it certainly has the enough power to do that. And it's just kind of pulling from these outlets and seeing how that works into the house. So maybe we'll end up with a version like this as the main house battery. Maybe we'll just have a smaller version that'll be the one that we take adventuring. They even make a bigger version than this, which I think for us is out of the question. It's large by huge. Um, but if you really needed long-term backup power, you know, that could be an option. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're definitely excited to, like I said, just put it through its paces and do some more research and see how it'll be connecting the, the things from the boat up to this. Uh, and if you're interested in Blue Eddy, you can go to the description. There's a link there. It'll take you over to their website and you can check out the smaller units, the bigger units, the solar panels. They got all sorts of stuff. So while I was working on the refrigerator, uh, I spent a lot of time working on the electrical plan. Uh, and unfortunately, that takes a lot of time. And when I'm doing things like researching whether or not we should run the wire in conduit and how big of wire we get and what pumps we should buy and all that jazz, how we should set the system up, should we do 12 volt, 24 volt? Uh, no physical work out here on the boat is getting done. But that kind of work sandwiched pretty well with the refrigerator because it would be apply a coat of fairing compound, wait two hours, sand it. And uh, in that two hours, I could do a lot of research and have it be kind of digestible chunks. What I came up with is that I would like to run the electrical in conduit. So I've got three quarter inch flexible conduit here. And I've got some one inch flexible conduit here. Uh, I'm gonna run the one inch up to the main mast uh, and that'll be for the nav lights and for any electronics that we wanna put up in the mast. So that's a little bit bigger. If we have to, if this isn't big enough, we can always run a three quarter up there as well. Uh, but I'm hoping that they'll fit in the one inch. We'll find out. Uh, but the three quarter will be the bulk of it. And they've got these handy dandy connectors. So these clip onto the end of the conduit and then these little fittings are threaded and these are going to attach to these junction boxes. So I found some nice low profile ones and as you can see the cover is clear which I also like. You can see what's going on in there uh, and what we'll do is we'll drill a hole in the side 
will glue in that fitting and then we'll be able to screw and unscrew the conduit from the box. Uh, and that should give us a solidly protected electrical system. Uh, it's not terribly common to run the lines in the, in the boat and conduit. It definitely is a little more expensive. It's a bit more time consuming, uh, but in the long run, I think it's worth it. It eliminates a lot of worry of chafe and all of that kind of thing. Um, from talking with folks who have boats and kind of pros and cons, I heard in time and time again, well, you know, you just have like a bus bar and some wires and a locker and you're just careful of what you put in that locker and make sure that it's not going to end up on the bus bar. And I, uh, I just prefer not to worry about any of that kind of thing. I'm planning on hoping having uh, friends and family and guests and stuff come aboard. And it would be great to be able to just say, yeah, shove your stuff in that locker and have the wires and the connections be really well protected in a box. Uh, and then be really protected in the conduit. And that'll protect them from chafe, uh, and it'll keep the weather off them. Um, and I think it'll hopefully lead to fewer electrical issues down the road. Uh, we've got a bunch of plastic uh, connectors here to attach the PVC, or attach the conduit rather. Uh, and I picked up, I've never used these before, but got some PVC cutters, some uh, conduit cutters. I think these will be handy. So I'm going to go grab the, uh, the electrical plan and kind of refresh my brain a little bit. And I'm going to start by scattering the junction boxes around the boat uh, and then starting to figure out where exactly I want to run the conduit, starting to drill some holes through the bulkheads and getting that put in. It's kind of exciting to start the next stage. Uh, I've done a lot of research and I hope I got this right. We're going to find out. <laughs> Go ahead, turn the dials. Early. You can do them one so at a time, or two at a time, or... It's color mixing. Oh. This is really cool. 